Hello there. So I would like to share with you this smart shop design I made here. This uh, shop is for servers where you don't worry about people breaking the blocks because of course someone could just break the entire shop and steal everything. But if you don't worry about that, uh, this shop has an indi indicator uh, for how much stock there is and a very simple purchasing, uh, an intuitive purchasing system. Uh, because uh, you have a payment pot here and you just set in the pot so for now right now it's diamonds but I could also just set the payment to be purple blocks and because a pot only accepts items which are already in the pot I automatically had have the filter set in this pot and uh, that's also uh, how I simply set the payment item to be um, and this shop also counts how much you have paid so right now I have set the price to one and this and that means if I put one of the correct item in I get the payment and uh, of course what is um, very cool about this shop is that you can dynamically so you can custom set your price to whatever you want so um, how this works is that basically up here you just have the stock and indicators and you have this binary counter down here and if all of the copper bulbs are turned off um, then you can see the price down here um, in binary minus one so you see here binary uh, zero this means that the uh, price of the shop is currently set to 1. If I want to set it to 2, I of course do binary 1 here. This means the price is 2. So now the price is still uh, 1, but if I pay once, um, from now on every, um, every item I want to buy is going to have the price 2. So I put 2 diamonds in and it um, pays um, and now of course this works for bulk um, uh, buying so if I have six if I put in six uh, diamonds it is going to give me three emerald blocks yeah and now if you want to set uh, so you can set the price to anything you want now you see this is uh, turned on, uh, so you cannot directly see the binary price here, but if you just pay one here and all the lamps are turned off, you can see the price here again. So the price is currently two. I can set it to whatever I want. So um, here, for example, I have set it to four because this is binary three plus one is four. And then this is the second item for the previous payment. And now, as you can see, if I can, if I put four diamonds in, it is going to get me. So uh, that's how the shop works. It's very simple and very easy to use. And um, you just set the price, uh, tell the uh, buyer here what the price is and they just have to right click this pot and they will get the payment uh, also i want to mention this shop is tileable so you can put multiple next to each other as an example i have um, this shop right here so here you can see um, i put as indicator what is being sold up here and i have set it to different prices and you can also di see different stocks and uh, it, um, it uh, creates a pretty nice shopping center environment. Now I'm going to show how to build one of these. And whilst building I'm going to also discuss how exactly all the system systems work. Because it's very simple and I know there are a lot of things about it that can be improved uh, for uh, especially around this item filtration here 
and maybe there's also a more compact and more f and faster binary counter design that I'm not aware of. Uh, I came up with this design myself um, that might speed up the shop so it's easier to buy. Uh, but yeah, also what if you want uh, the shop to pay for example two emerald blocks instead of one? Well, this redstone line here, uh, so when the customer paid the correct amount of items, then this line will fire and it will fire this dropper and that's what goes through a water stream and ends up here as uh, the purchased item. Um, and if you want more pulses, you just take this pulse and you have a long redstone line here, so you just add like a system to multiply this pulse to 3 or 4 or whatever you want. Or an alternative method is to fill the stock with shulker boxes that are filled with the item. Um, okay, so on to building this. Um, you can see this uh, shop consists of uh, basically uh, three parts. We have the stock up here. Then we have a counter here in between, uh, no, an item filter, an item filter with a clock down here in the middle, and then uh, at the bottom there is the uh, logic, the counter. And first I'm going to start with building the counter. So how the uh, binary counter works, um, it has, uh, so right now I have set it to four logical cells. So this means I can set prices from 1 to 15. Um, one, uh, it always can have uh, the, um, as many different prices as uh, the uh, binary exponent of the amount of copper bulbs you have minus 1. So I have 4, uh, 2 to the power of 4 is 16. This means I can have it set to 15 prices because one uh, one value is used in the system for the signal um, for when you have paid the correct amount so here i have laid out one cell of the binary counter and uh, the way uh, this works is that up here it has a copper bob which uh, represents the current state of the counter. And the cool thing about uh, copper bulbs is that, uh, that if you have many uh, copper bulbs uh, in a row, they actually all act like uh, flip-flops and uh, with powering them you automatically count down and this is exactly what uh, you want in a counter for a shop for example you just have an, an initial value like uh, let's say two or three and it just counts down to zero and when it's zero uh, it finished counting and then you just have to reset it to the number you had before and uh, one important thing here is um, that counting has finished when all the copper bulbs uh, in the system are on. So for example, this is right now. Um, so if all the copper bulbs are on, all of these comparators are going to power the redstone lamp next to them and also toggle off the redstone torch. You have to have glass or a transparent block here in order to not power the lamp back with the redstone like that. Uh, but then if you simply have um, uh, this sort of system, you will see that only if all the uh, copper bulbs here are on, this line can uh, go to zero. And this means only if all of them are on, this torch lights up. And this is basically the signal that tells you uh, that the counting has finished. This also activates the dropper and it also resets the counter. So you can immediately take the pulse from that, like this, and then connect it up to uh, this pulse generator. And this then generates a pulse here and this pulse should reset the circuit. 
So everything else down here, this whole part here, is just about resetting the circuit. So um, how this works is you have this copper bulb, and this copper bulb is a smart XOR gate. Uh, why is this an XOR gate? Uh, I'm just going to show you a very quick example. If you have a copper bulb like this and two observers run running into it, this is an XOR gate. If you don't believe me, let me show you. So if you know what an XOR gate is, you just saw on is uh, 1 and off is 0. It always behaves exactly like an XOR gate. Of course, if you power it once, it is the opposite. It is an XNOR gate, which is very cool. See. And that's the trick I use here. Basically, with this button, I change this from either an XOR gate or XNOR gate. And this lamp shows whether this copper bulb, so um, whether this copper bulb is um, in the state uh, that it's meant to be when the system gets reset. So right now I have the pricing set to zero. Uh, that's why, for example, uh, so if all the lights were on here and all of the copper, copper bulbs were on, uh, this would mean uh, that every single um, bulb needs to be changed. So the way um, uh, I need to remind you, if um, the only time the counter gets reset is when all the copper bulbs are turned on. This means I just power I just power uh, this, how do I do it, like that. I just power the comparator, which needs to be in subtract mode, so all of these connecting comparators are on subtract, subtract mode, otherwise this does not work. And if you power it, you see this turns off. And you just do the same thing for this, so you just power it on this again. And that's how you just um, toggle off every single uh, light bulb uh, that um, needs to be reset. So this is the entire theory about around the counter. It might be confusing, but uh, let me just place in a few more layers. So uh, because the layers are so close to each other, you cannot uh, do the same pattern right here to connect the um, to connect the circuits uh, because um, you will see um, this block here uh, if I had this connection the same as here uh, then a redstone line would connect here and you don't want that that's why uh, you just have an alternating pattern of um, yeah, let me just uh, make the circuit. So one important thing here is, of course, don't forget this comparator. This comparator um, basically tells the state of this XOR gate. So this XOR gate tells me whether the um, uh, bulb needs to be toggled in during the reset. And uh, here is the reset signal. It always comes with a repeater and a redstone torch uh, and the redstone wire like this and basically if this goes on for example if i press this so let's say this is on this means this needs to reset and uh, this powers a block here which in turn powers this redstone wire which toggles off the redstone torch this means that now because this redstone torch is uh, turned off uh, it does not block this redstone wire, and this redstone wire can accept logic. You see here it's turned off, that's why this redstone torch prevents anything to change here. But this redstone torch which is off allows here the signal to pass through, 
and this means only a uh, copper bulb that's on allows uh, the reset signal to go through and uh, I just um, carry up the signal right like that and I have a redstone torch here which inverts the signal and then as you can see if I had now let's turn this off if I now have all my um, uh, lamps on then with a quick pulse it resets and that's exactly how it works and of course for the last bulb you don't have a comparator with subtract mode leading into that so for the last one you just feed the pulse directly into the uh, copper bulb that's why I have a target block with a redstone wire going in like that and if you look back at this this is exactly what I do here so this is the first copper bulb and here I just power the copper bulb directly to toggle it and not the comparator before and this also explains why you need these repeaters because um, if this copper bulb is off if I now power this line so uh, let's say I have this here if I power this line this will not change the mode of the copper bulb even if it's on uh, let me show you so even if this is on this signal won't do anything if this is off um, that is why uh, when I have every single uh, so when all the light bulbs are on and I'm reminding you again uh, um, only when all the light bulbs are on the research signal gets sent you can actually um, turn off the bulb by sending a pulse through here like that and um, the reason why you have repeaters here is because you have to turn off this one first in order to be able to turn off this one because if you had the others uh, if it were the other way around, like if I first, oops, uh, that's not intended. So if I were to first um, toggle off this bulb like that, you cannot to toggle off this bulb even if you would want to. So that is why uh, you need to pass on, pass the reset signal from the last copper bulb to the first in order to have the reset signal um, work. So the more cells you have, uh, the longer the resetting of the counter circuit takes. Uh, which is a trade-off, but I think it's fast enough. Like, the resetting of four bulbs is about as fast as counting as the counter, so you don't really notice it. And... Um, like if you want prices higher than 15 i would recommend you to just um better just contemplate about what exactly you want as a payment maybe just require a more expensive item uh, instead of a lot of the same cheaper item uh, because also it's kind of annoying to, to have like a person click 15 times right click here in order to buy something so that's always something to consider but back to constructing this so here you can see I have built two layers of this and you can have them alternating so um, the next layer can have this connection pattern again so uh, let me just build that like this you can see while I'm building so there's no confusion about which um, which block goes where like that and this then we have glass where's my glass oh. there we go like that and then a block here with a repeater redstone wire and then a comparator and the copper bulb like that 
Then you have a block here, another comparator here, then a redstone lamp here with an observer and a redstone torch above, glass and redstone wire, and you have a copper bulb here again with some glass here, another comparator, a block, and then another block up here with a redstone dust here and a torch. And that's it. Um, that's already another layer to the logic circuit added. And if I were to power this, um, this has to count a bit. And it counts down so you can see 2, 1 and 0. And now you just need one more pulse here and you will see reset signal was sent. Of course, uh, one thing I have to uh, warn you about. Uh, sometimes while the things are switching, sometimes for a short time this wire can turn off, which can actually trigger a pulse. And that's why you have a simple filter of just a redstone repeater before you send the signal. So, um, uh, yeah, exactly. So all you need to do here is have a repeater here, which then in turn uh, controls the logic. And this is this one repeater is enough to uh, filter out the noise of uh, toggling the copper bulbs okay but back to replicating what's ex uh, there exactly so this wire is going to be somewhere else i just put it here for explanation reasons so i showed you how to build the regular cells but of course as i mentioned the first cell has to be a bit different but uh, so uh, there is a target block beneath here and if you as you can see here uh, this bulb directly takes in the signal from the counter circuit so this circuit here uh, this is where the items flow and whenever one item goes through uh, it will power this comparator which directly powers the copper bulb here through this block and that's how the system counts so we just replicate that right here. We have a comparator, and uh, this is the counter input part done. Now let's connect this. Uh, have, yeah, I have a repeater. So uh, because the signal is more direct here, it does not go through the comparator, but like this, you want to put extra delay on uh, that. Um, on the last signal so you make sure this bulb turns off after this one so this one can also get reset correctly and down here it's pretty much the same uh, you have a block with a redstone torch and then two redstone wire here another block, a redstone torch, uh, some wire, some glass, a comparator, and a block, and the copper bulb. Now this is simple, like that. Okay, so I just had a break and I noticed that I forgot to set this to subtractor mode. And yeah, uh, this also needs to be glass. Yeah, I don't care about the circuit flipping because I can just reset it whenever I want. For the last um, cell here, so actually the first cell, uh, you have also on this repeater a bit of a bigger delay. So you see these are all delay too, but the last one has a bigger delay like that and also if you want to tile these uh, you want to have a block um, here because uh, if you 
build another machine uh, like that next to it you're going to have this block right here and if you alternate the same would happen here and if the if it was like that uh, the redstone would connect so that's why you have a block right here but if you do not intend on tiling these and just have one or have some spacing between them you don't need this block of course i can just connect up the output signal the reset signal and the repeater has said and the torch above is used to pass on the signal to the dropper so this here is the dropper output line and this part here is for the reset signal and i think the signal strength is strong enough to reach from up here to down there so this is fine uh, then yeah it's time to so this is uh the entirety of the counter circuit finished uh now all i need to build is the clock the counter the item filter and the storage like that i have it set to the node d like that and this is going to output in a water stream so now uh, let's build the storage unit first so of course uh, there needs to be some chests to store the items and you just have a tower with hoppers um, in like a feeding line so that no piece stays in the chest above and 100% of the stock also gets used for the shop like that and now uh, the indicator indicator lines are pretty simple you have alternating blocks with comparators like this and then you have a set of blocks again Actually, uh, some of them are already observers to transmit the signal. Uh, so, a cool thing about redstone lamp is you can place bl uh, blocks on them, but also at the same time uh, you can uh, pass, through, pass through a signal by putting a, an observer behind it. And uh, that's all you need to then have a copper bulb here. And then the same goes for this one, like this. And for this one, you can uh, just do an observer like that. And for the bottom one, the same thing applies. Like that. Of course you want it uh, toggled down when it's empty and now if I for example fill something you will see it turns on and if it goes empty it turns off and if I didn't have this hopper here the same thing happens with this and so on and that's how the indicator light works pretty simple and intuitive which is very nice and this is already the wall of the shop. So now on to the last bit and that's the count counter. So we have a, uh, a chest right here. Um, you can also put a pot here and you can of course extract further this. Uh, so if if you want you can just connect because this is the payment output you can just connect all of the uh, payment outputs of every shops to a hopper line or some other means to just transport the items to one central location uh, all of this is up to you 
Uh, but I need a pot here, then another hopper, and this is the input pot. Now this pot also gets a comparator output, which feeds into a block, uh, and then there's two blocks right here, and the redstone torch like this. Um, and this is already the item filter because you can just uh, take this signal and feed it back in like this. So actually if you want to have a floor here, instead of having the uh, redstone wire go here and then here into this, you just have it run into this block and then it powers this, so you can have a floor here. So everything can look a bit nicer. Of course, you can fill in all of this and decorate this however you want. You of course don't have to use purple blocks, you can use whatever you want. And now you can see um, if I uh, put an item. This is signal strength 1, so it does not turn off the torch. Um, this is to like initi initiate the item filter and if you have four items it still stays at power one and if you put one more item it uh, pulses to power uh, two here and it passes on a signal it turns off the torch and it toggles on the hopper for a very short time and then it lets an item through and as you can see it got stuck here because the pulse isn't long enough and uh, the way uh, to solve this is simply to have a dummy item at the beginning here. So you just have something else like this. So if your payment item is precious, of course, you do that. And then just the first item that goes through is... Um, is not the payment item, but the dummy item. But now it's filled up here and every time a, uh, another item passes through, at the same time another item gets uh, fed back here. But uh, the problem here is, so this does a trigger counting. Uh, if you put a lot of items, it's not going to count all of them individually, but only the start and the uh, end. And uh, how to solve that is by having a clock here that only uh, pulses uh, and unlocks this hopper for short uh, periods and that's how you then allow only single items to go through at once and that allows this to count items individually then. So to lock this you have a um, you have a repeater feeding into there and the repeater actually has some delay. Uh, observer up here with another redstone line which then has the clock connected to it. So this is a very simple clock, you just have a redstone torch and two repeaters with this timing. Yeah, and also I'm already going to implement this part. So um, one thing you want to do is when the counter finished, you want to stop the clock, you want to pause the clock for a moment until uh, the um, until the resetting of the counter is finished and that's why you use this input. This is basically a buffered signal so if this both turns on it immediately stops but because of the small delay when the torches turn off there's a small delay before the co counter starts again just so there's some little buffering time uh, to uh, make sure this counter does not get uh, too quick of an input. So yeah, I explained uh, everything about the clock. Uh, you can see there's one more uh, redstone torch feeding and stopping the clock. Uh, this is another filter here that uh, detects whether an item uh, is going through the system or not. Uh, this is simply to not have a running clock uh, while um, uh, while the shop is dormant, so you don't have thousands of clocks uh, running all the time. 
Um, I'm not sure if this improves performance or not, but if it does, lucky you. Um, oh, I'm just falling. Yeah, now, now the uh, whole contraption suddenly is starting to be quite, um, quite tight. So, for uh, the clock here, you do not uh, need a filtered output. Uh, this does mean you are going to have some very short breaks in the counting. You will notice it uh, when paying. Um, it will like have a... <laughs> a br uh, it, it, it's actually quite funny. Um, it will have like a brain freeze moment uh, when it stops counting because uh, I'm not filtering the pulses like here with the redstone repeater but directly using them and that's why sometimes the clock gets stopped for a short amount of time because there was a switching pulse here and uh, this is enough to like <laughs> make a noticeable uh, pause in the constant counting and yeah it, it actually if you have like a sound attached to this so you can attach a sound here uh, I use emerald blocks here and then just a note block like that and that just gives a beep every time uh, the counter counts one and if this gets paused the beeps aren't continuous and um, <laughs> It just sounds funny because it's like the counter is uh, having a brain freezing, brain freeze moment. Uh, but yeah, enough with uh, nonsense. I messed up something. Okay, so these pulses aren't. Ah, that's why there's a repeater. This has to be in to the in delay too, for the pulse to be long enough from here to here, so that the torch also toggles. Here. And now it managed to count one and also um, create a nice uh, water stream for the output. So let's get some soul sand here. The last thing you want is to place the water uh, because otherwise things might break. It's a standard rule for when working with water. Uh, yeah, and here you just have a sign that will block the uh, water stream. Oh, I accidentally pressed escape like that. And then you can fill in the water. So let's. Uh, take a water bucket I don't know where it is it is in tools and utilities here oh, okay like that and that's already all you need and now let's stock up this with an example item like emerald blocks uh, what might be missing ah here see you know, this you see this part I have missed, so I want to uh, because the because of this uh, repeater that is delayed, uh, you have a, a delayed output for the resetting, and uh, that's why the reset signal isn't fast enough by stopping the clock to stop the counter, and uh, that's why you just use direct. A, another direct output right here so this can be simply solved by having a glass block right here oops so I had to press put the item filter back in because I uh, broke this um, this I think uh, should be the entire uh, machine finished so as you can see it's pretty simple to build it does not have that many components it looks more complicated than it actually is. Uh, I mean, you might think that this whole part here is a bit complicated, but actually <laughs> it's not complicated. This copper bulb just tells whether uh, the 
current state of the bulb here is the same state as when you want uh, have reset the clock and um, yeah it it lights up if it's not the same state and it um, turns off if it is the same state and uh, you can already uh, test it out so Okay, let's pay eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you see it's working. So now let's pay three. And let's set the counter back to three. So now the pricing is three. And let's pay the last item for the four. And now from now on the price should be always three. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And there you can see it is working 100% of the time now. <laughs> Small mishap, I just forgot this redstone line, right? Uh, this redstone line, I just forget this one. And I also wanted to get rid of the one target block that was here. Because target blocks aren't that cheap. I mean they are cheap, but not that cheap. But okay, uh, if you have any suggestions how um, I could uh, improve this design, of course, uh, please tell me. Uh, I'm just going to demonstrate this shopping mall once more and that's it. So yeah, I'm not going to say anything. So bye.